What is up, everyone? Good morning. Happy Monday. Can you all hear me? Let me know in chat. Sup, sup, sup. And you're right. It's Tuesday. Thank you very much. I'm used to doing this on Monday for y'all. Been a long ass week for me, everybody. Good, bad, but long. What's up, Jay? What's up, Jay? Trades in the house, bro. OG. Anyways, long week, man. Um, had a boot camp, live boot camp in. Chicago Thursday, Friday was awesome. Awesome group there. Had Sandra there, Tony there, a couple of my six-figure students. First six-figure female student, Sandra. And then Tony Tones, who's one of the upcoming cats, doing really, really well. Has crossed 200K now. So actually got some, uh, got to interview them for you guys. Going to be putting that stuff on YouTube for you all um, in the coming weeks. And really, some really good stuff there, so. One trade for me so far, just had an overnight from Friday. Um, really nice trade, about 12,000 or so, a little over 12,000 yesterday on the overnight on Pixie. Pixie, all right? So Pixie, they did, um, they had this big move from 40 cents into the dollar, to a dollar 40 actually. Um, Close near a buck, gap down, couple days of consolidation. On Friday, they announced they're canceling their split, okay? Um, sorry, they announced that they're postponing the split. That is why I went long. And I went long um, here in the 75 to 80 cent range on a few shares. I had 20,000 shares. I sold it into a buck 30 into the breakout level. Then I sold some into the buck 70s and 80s. Got it, captured it all live yesterday. So I'm going to try to get some of that onto YouTube for you guys as well um this afternoon so stay posted i'll have quite a bit of stuff coming to you guys here on youtube uh specifically uh trade example from yesterday that i mentioned and some lessons that are involved because there's some really really key lessons involved in this trade um you know buying down here in the 80s and then selling into resistance and selling into subsequent spikes it was a great great trade yesterday so we'll get all into that for now. Well, let's see what that does. It's it's the holding breakout level. So I'm still interested in this this morning. They are going to do a split at some point. We know they're going to do a split at some point. But for now, I'm keeping eyes. All right. If they can continue to hold these lows today in the dollar thirty range, probably like a buck twenty five is all the wiggle room I'd give it. Maybe a buck twenty. But if it can hold this range right here, buck twenty, buck thirty, we may see some subsequent squeeze today. It was definitely squeezing yesterday, okay? It's probably shorted heavily Friday. I'm I'm sorry, uh, last week. And then again, even on Friday when they put the PR out that they were canceling the split, they actually halted up. So it would have garnered some attention on Friday um, before kind of being slapped. If you guys have any questions while I'm going, let me know, okay? Sebastian says, how do I manage overnight risk since I can't place a stop? Do I watch it until after hours close? You know what? I try to. I try to. Um, it depends. It really depends on, on the scenario, okay? The thing is, if I'm not comfortable enough taking it overnight, I shouldn't be overnight. That's the way I feel. That's the way I've always felt. If I don't have enough conviction to hold a stock overnight, it shouldn't be overnight. And it'll take a while for those of you who are newer to understand that. Um, but for me, that's always been the case. The other thing I always try to do when I get an overnight is get a cushion. Um, so those of you who trade with me in the afternoons and stuff understand this concept. I, I like to get a cushion if I can. So I'm buying weakness towards the afternoon, hopefully get a spike. So by the time I'm going into the afternoon, hopefully I'm up to up 10 or 15% of my position already. That way, worst case scenario, it gaps down 10, 15% on Monday. I'm still okay. If that makes sense. Will I trade eBet? We'll see. They did a split finally. They they were always going to do a split. They're sub one. They split at a buck. I mean, they're kind of screwed at the moment. So, But I'm thinking they may be more like an EJH. 
they also did a split kind of sub dollar and you can kind of see they went straight over a buck and they'll probably hold a buck for a while so we'll see one second let me grab a Day 12, no nicotine today, day 12, just to let y'all know, it's fucking awesome. Alexo gapping from four to nine at the moment. V E R Y. Ricity acquired, ignore, it looks like. Yep. So ignore V-E-R-Y. They were acquired for 11 bucks a share. It looks like ALXO was acquired, too. I could be wrong. Ah, uh, no. They've got positive phase two news. Okay. Last week was Biotech's. This is a good, good catalyst. Positive interim phase two uh, results. It's a good biotech catalyst. That being said, the gap's really, really big. Um, when biotech's gap really big like this on on a catalyst, I really like to let them shake and see what's going on um, from a fundamental standpoint. They're already gapping up to this nine level here at the moment. You can see it's a huge gap up where it's going to gap up to. So I got to be careful. I like to see a pool, you know, gap ups like that. Rarely last. They have to pull. So I have eyes on it. But I want to see it continue to shake. It's already hit 12. So it is has shaken three bucks already. Check out what's going on there from a fundamental standpoint here in a sec. Floats 18.7 tentatively. PNT, that also looks like they were acquired. Yep. Ignore V-E-R-Y. Ignore P-N-T. A-L-X-O is possibly in play. S-P-R-C. I saw a little bit earlier. It spiked a little bit more too now at this point. Microfloat. Patent news for their core technology. So they do have some news. Recent split. It's a reverse split pump. God damn, dude. S-P-R-C is a reverse split pump then. Um, one, two, three days. Damn. The play for me on these guys is really load them. Day two, day three, day four, day five. That's been the been the idea. When they set up like this, low threes holding has kind of been to like load the low threes or load the twos, guys. That has been the idea for me on these plays. Beat the crowd. Get ahead of what everyone's doing. Get ahead of the PR. Don't have to chase today, you know, when it's already up three bucks a share now from, from yesterday's lows. 354, 55, 56, 50. It already hit 750. Okay. So that so that kind of sucked, but it goes to show the strat is still in play. It's just about you either have to catch the PR right when it comes out, which would have happened at 7:30 Eastern this morning, and then be one of the first to buy or buy the dip from to the low fours. This area of the chart, okay. If not, once it gets going like this, I'm not playing. I gotta wait for gap and crap reversal now. You know? And it's already reversed. It's already gone. Does that make sense to you guys? I hope it does. The The reverse split pump scenario has become almost more of a swing trade than an actual day trade now. Thanks to everyone fucking it up for me. <laughs> How's my trading been going? Great, man. Really, really good. Minimal, big gains lately small small amount of trading big amount of gains it's been great 
Um, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff in my personal life at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, my father, who's older, is struggling with the end of his life at, at this point, and he's got pneumonia. He's in the hospital. So, uh, those who don't know, he actually died on Father's Day this year for 40 minutes and came back to life after 40 minutes of having no heartbeat. <laughs> Um, they called it a miracle several times. It, it has been a miracle. And so he's been, he's been around. Um, but since June, man, it just lit a fire under my butt. Like I, it's, bad things could happen at any time to me. And I've got a family of four and with my four kids and my wife. And, uh, I'm trying to make as much money trading as I can right now. I'm trying to help as many students make money as they can right now and change their lives. Um, just because, like I said, shit could happen anytime to any of us. And it's made it so real for me. So that's what's been happening. I've had to kind of go back and forth between Phoenix. I'll be going there at, right after this webinar pretty much today. Um, and I'm bringing my grandkids, my grandkids, bringing all my kids to go see their grandpa um, this week. Because it's not looking good for him at the moment. Side note. So that's kind of what's going on in my life uh, from a personal standpoint. Just really tough at the moment. But I've been diving into the trading and the teaching since this has happened. It's been, um, I'm sure any of my students in here can attest, I've been present and given everything I've got for you guys. And a, lot, a large portion has to do with this life experience stuff that, you know, keep going through. All right, so ALXO, I'm going to need that one to shake for me if I'm going to play it. Same with SPRC, I'll need this one to shake a little bit more if I'm going to play it. Um, maybe a lot more. And then again, if it becomes too weak, then we're dealing with a morning fade. So I'll watch for morning gap and crop reversal. If it doesn't reverse, if it does reverse quick, I'll smack it quick. Kind of a single. Got to hit filings really quick. Still have 17 minutes, so we're getting through pretty quick. I want to get through the tickers first. Here's that split, SPRC. Okay. We'll see if six holds here and then pushes. We'll see if 550 holds. Pretty much five, 450, half hold dollar levels. 475 again it's one of those things where i'm kind of late to this party i see you i'm way late to this party won't touch it multi-day breakout bottom bouncer another 17 15 16 cent bottom bouncer that we're seeing going 56 50 cents 60 cents breaking out now okay um if you can nail any of these multi-day moves on some of these bottom bouncers you can i mean there's some account changing stuff going on in small cap right now guys life-changing shit going on it's just a matter of honing in on it which is which i'm trying to do for my people right now try to help them hone in on some of these as well bqs is on the scan another one of these kind of bottom bouncers looks like they gap down one to ten cents oh one of my biggest watches for this week will be this it's going to be this right here all right smile direct club got through yesterday's lows but kind of held on to that 12 cent level um you can see bounce off 11 and a half, 12 cents. This, I would, this is a strategy I call the bankruptcy bounce. I call this the bankruptcy bounce, guys. This one probably goes to like 30 cents at some point. I could be wrong. Um, I'm still holding a bag on V-Ray because I was wrong on that one. Now it's V-Ray Q. Still holding this damn bag on V-Ray at 5 cents or 7 cents or whatever. I just take it off end of the year, like I said, but that's the, that's the only one I've ever been bagged on in this, uh, with this scenario. And it was my fault. My plan was to average down to zero. That's what I did. It didn't work. So STC bankruptcy bounce. They announced bankruptcy a few days ago. Yesterday, you can see they already popped. They tried to, they went from 12 to 20 that's 100 percent gain there then they went from 14 to 17 kind of dicked around was holding 14 as lows yesterday you can see it's kind of using that as resistance this morning uh, but i'll be watching this for a definitive bottom and it may not be completely definitive but i'll be watching 12 11 10 9 8 that area as it gets there for a bounce you can play a quick bounce if it works maybe a little bit more drawn out bounce but that's my main watch this week for something that's low key under the radar, people probably aren't looking at. I have a feeling that this one bounces pretty damn decently. 
okay, into the 20s and maybe 30 cent range. Especially the way bottom bouncers have been working lately, okay? So SDC, it's not on anyone's radars right now. It's on your guys' radar, hopefully, though, now. And hopefully that one can turn out to be a decent little bottom bouncer. AGIL, bottom bouncer, 15 to 30 cents this morning, pre-market. You know, 15 to 30 cents for this morning, pre-market. So some of these tickers that have been getting beaten up this year that have been basing are worth a watch for some of these swings. And uh, later today with the pack, uh, when we're doing our live webinar, I'll be doing going through how I find some of these tickers again. Um, <clears throat> For those of you who are kind of newer and, and listening to what's going on here, definitely go back and watch the last few webinars. I'd watch the last two pre-market preps, particularly two ago where I locked in a bunch of money on my overnight. I would watch the last video lesson that I just dropped on reverse splits and my trade there. I would definitely watch that. I'm going to be dropping a video today on yesterday's trade that has a lot of lessons in it on overnight trades, risk reward, reverse splits, a lot of different scenarios. Um, and then some interviews coming up. So there's a lot of stuff going on. We got Vegas guys. Those, we have two in-person boot camps left. Okay. Only two. We've got Vegas, October 28th and 29th. Um, it's going to be the Saturday and Sunday, actually after Tim's conference. So if anyone here is going to Tim's conference, I'll be there that Saturday and Sunday going through a bunch of trading psychology stuff. Um, process stuff and kind of a unique camp that I'm working on, uh, really psychology based camp. So if you're around 28th and 29th in Vegas, we'll be there. And then November 2nd and 3rd in San Fran. And that's all we're doing rest of the year, guys. And if you haven't been to one of those camps, I would highly, highly recommend it. It's, um, they're game changers. I promise. Who's been in the camp? Are you guys in chat? Let, let me know what you guys think. So let's go. Uh, also, if you're enjoying this pre-market prep and you like me coming on here on YouTube for you guys and dropping the heat, smash a like for me, please. It helps with the algorithm. Goddamn computers and AI that we got to deal with all the time now. For everything in our life, we got to deal with it. You know? SPRC holding six for now, kind of like I mentioned. This is a key level, at least on a pre-market chart for me. For those of you who hear stuff like only buy over VWAP and, uh, you know, that's a bunch of shit, you guys. It's an absolute bunch of bullshit, just to let you know. Anyone who's only buying over VWAP is only buying from me as I sell it to them. <laughs> Vegas, I'm going to try to do some streaming. Yeah, we're going to try to stream at least a little bit of Vegas if I can. If possible. Okay, let's rock. Let's keep getting into the scan. Sorry, y'all. I don't want to backtrack here. SPRC, ICU, VQS, LIFW has been my main watch for a while now. I missed the buy here. This was the swing for me. I wanted to swing it from literally nine cents post the first run. All right, guys. One of the best, most fruitful patterns in small cap right now, easily, if you can find them, are multi-day runs on bottom bouncers. I mean, I'm talking about six, seven, eight, ten cent stocks going to fifty cents, a dollar, two dollars, three dollars right now. Now, for every single one that does that, there are a bunch of them that are just doing splits, and that's it. Then they're diluting, and that's fine. It is what it is. But we're seeing a lot of these do these multi days. All right, like your T2s would be a great example. Stuff like this, they go from like seven cents. They have an initial move, then they break out. And there are quite a lot more. Um, there were a lot more of these even better ones. Okay. But that's the idea for me. So I've, I'm looking for those these days. When we get a huge bottom bouncer. Okay. Six cents to 24 cents in one day on 700 million in volume. And then it fades all the way back to eight cents. It becomes a possible swing trade buy for me right now. This level. It seems really weird. But you'll see it. You know. Um. I've got one right now. I'm a little too high. I'm about 12 cents, but AGRI is another example. This one's not reacting as well for now, so I may end up cutting it if it doesn't work. 
But stuff like this, we've been seeing them retest and re-break out. Um, again, LIFW, like we mentioned, this one's setting up for definitely a multi-day. It's gapping up to the 25 cent range now. So you can see LIFW gearing up for a potential breakout here. I'll have eyes on that this morning. I don't want to chase the breakout. That's the whole thing. That's why I want to be long from nine in a swing mentality as opposed to chasing breakouts these days. I still don't like breakouts. GMBL, I've got some um, at 10 cents. Another bottom bounce idea. I've got them at 10. You know, they've hit eight already. That's kind of max pain for me on something like this. I'll cut if they get back down to eight. But for me, just looking for 14, 15, something like that. Nothing too crazy. Have to understand a 10 cent stock moves five cents. How much percentage gain is that? Let me know in chat. <laughs> Let me know. Okay. Our VLP is another one that I'm definitely keeping eyes on. It's reacted kind of funkily lately, and it's not the smallest market cap. It is a small market cap, but I'm definitely going to be keeping eyes on this chart for sure. Our VLP. Thanks, Wesley. Anyways, you have to understand that concept. When it goes from 10 cents to 15 cents, it's a it's a 50% gain, guys. And when that happens, your abacus. <laughs> when that happens, someone's taking their taking their gains off at 50%. All right. It's not, oh, I, only, I only made five cents a share. I look at it like that's 50% gain. So I have to size appropriately and then take profits appropriately. And that's also why you see these tickers doing hundreds and 200 and 500 million shares because when everyone's trading them, myself included, I'm trading 100,000 shares, 200,000 shares, 300,000 shares. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? We're running out of time. Seven minutes, man. These pre market preps are so fast. I may start doing a little bit more, a little bit longer next week. Okay. Keep SPRC on the back burner. Again, these huge biotech gappers, I need them to, I need them to pull for me. And if they pull enough, they can become really good swing trades, at least for a couple days. All right, so right now this is gapping up to like eight, nine bucks. If this candle ends up down here at like seven dollars, it's going to be seven sixes somewhere, anywhere in this area. It'll be a big time watch for me the next couple days. Um, big, big time watch. How about the commissions when I load 100K shares? It, the only thing I really care about when I'm doing that is to make sure I'm using one of my brokers that's just one, one uh, that just charges you um per buy as opposed to per share if that makes sense i, I wouldn't want to use a per share broker trading hundreds of thousands of shares i made that mistake a long time ago with uh interactive brokers trading btcs btsc uh when they were otcs back in the day hundreds of thousands millions of shares and it was not cool Arnaz is on the scan again this morning. Worth keeping an eye on. What is it? The first green day pattern there? Wow, look at that. That is fucking crazy, right? Little gap up first green day for Arnaz after some nasty, nasty, nasty action post. Huge. This is the one of the bottom bouts I was talking about. 50 cents to three bucks in one day. In one freaking day, this thing did that, y'all. Right? That was wild. And then Arnaz, this is what set off the bottom bouncers or the uh, biotechs last week in the first place. So maybe worth a watch. No real plans on it for now. Kind of keep eyes. Scan's kind of light this morning. Okay. Markets are gapping down for now. All right. Markets had been weak. This week, end of last week, it's been trying to bounce a little bit in terms of the overall markets, but for now, we're gapping down again. So still some trepidation in the overall markets. It's good to it's good to keep eyes on, okay? It's good to keep eyes on. My perspective is not, di is not just a bit different than other small cap YouTubers. It's probably a million percent different than most of them. That's why I've been successful over time. 
is by literally not doing that shit that everyone else pumps and all the crap that they do. Formulating my own. So I don't trade breakout bullshit. I don't trade momentum bullshit that everyone's chasing. I don't trade fucking meme stocks. I don't trade bullshit, man. I found my own way. I found my own patterns. I help my students do that for themselves. That's where it's at, y'all. Yeah, Alpha Guide will be dropping some more today. And then I got to get back to Phoenix um, for the next few days. And then hopefully I'll be able to just drop the rest when I get back. But. But um, small caps, a special place. If you know what the fuck you're doing, not many people do. Um, it's all about entries to me. It's all about finding advantageous setups using the fact that it's so scammy small cap but predictable to be on the right end of everything you know that's where it's at really everyone else on here just pumps i watch i've been watching youtube and everyone who talks about small cap long on here are pumping they're like straight pumpers they're in a ticker and they're still pumping and that's fucking bullshit man and it's fucking illegal you know fuck that man sorry that's why I'm on here. It's the only reason. It's because I've been I've been trying to do better in terms of like social media and getting content to you guys. And so to do that, I have to take in a lot, unfortunately. And I watch everyone. And there's not much out there that I've seen that's not just unsolicited garbage and pumping. It's fucking stupid. But it's fine. That's what people like on YouTube, man. They want to see pumping. They want to see action. They want to see someone trading a million fucking things a day on their paper account or whatever. Fuck that, dude. Excuse my French if you got kids around you right now. But it makes me really, really mad. It's like people's money, you know? It's not a joke. But that's YouTube. It's the world. It is what it is, y'all. You know? I'm not gonna hate on, on anyone in particular, but th they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're pumping. They're trying to use you guys to make some money and then hopefully get you to pay them after they use you. It's a fucking joke, y'all. It's sickening. Okay, real fast. Sorry for my rant. It's my only rant for the day, I promise you guys. I promise. Anyways, STC, I'm going to be keeping eyes on them um, for the rest of this week. The lower, the better for bankruptcy bounce. The lower, the lower, lower, the better. So I'll be watching them specifically this morning. Um, <clears throat> SPRC. Like I said, I needed to load it. I don't really want to chase it. That's the whole issue. That's the whole issue. Let's look at recent splits real fast if you guys would like to do that. How's that sound? We only have one minute. We'll go a few minutes into market open. Then, then Wolves, I'll catch you guys in the Discord for live market webinar. Um, let's see what splits we got. First, let's check um, SPRC, medium risk. Didn't look too bad. Some pipe warrants in the 60s. 130s, 270s. They got an ATM. That's all you got to really worry about for now. Which, I mean, that sucks, but. Reverse splits. You can see votes approved on all these tickers here. Votes have already been approved. All these tickers, Femi. <laughs> you know, these tickers that, uh, that we've been trading and stuff from zero or whatever. They're still doing splits or have votes approved at least for splits. Upcoming splits like Pixie, like we mentioned but have been running and then we've got a bunch of completed splits including SPRC here so this is where I've been finding my splits dilution tracker there is a link in the description I believe of the video anyways if y'all enjoyed uh pre-market prep this morning if you enjoy me coming on here and dropping some some knowledge for you please smash that like make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss I'm going to be dropping a lot of stuff this week in particular um SPRC straight morning spike. TNT acquired, very acquired. And molecule I've been seeing lately. Back on my scan again this morning and about another bottom bouncer. That one went 15 to 30 already. LIFW straight morning spike for now.
Those who have never joined me, man, my MO, my MO every single morning, unless I have a very specific entry I'm looking for on a specific stock is to let things shake for 10, 15 minutes, five minimum. You know, when something spikes straight out the gate, I leave it. There's no good risk reward for me. All right. So something like this is spiking. I just ignore it. The only entry on this now becomes a pullback to 24 cents, 23 cents. This area right here where I can risk low a day, a higher low. That's it on a morning spike. I prefer morning pools and weakness to, to look at most of the time. So I left uh, LIFW straight morning spike. I would need to pull back to trade it. SPRC is consolidating out the gate as far as I'm concerned between 6.30 and 7. Okay. All I'm trying to do first 15 minutes of the day is let the opening range set. I hope this makes sense to you guys, but I let to let let the opening range set up. What's well, all the volume comes in in the morning? Let a high a day set, let a low a day set for f at least five minutes minimum. But that fifteen minute time frame really gives you um, enough time for the volume to be shaken out, all the gamblers to come in, all the market orders, all the idiots, all the chasers, all the early shorts, all happen right now. Okay, all the noobs are just fucking chasing shit around. Uh, chasing probably this breakout on LIFW is being chased heavily right now. It's not even a breakout yet in my eyes until we get to the 30s. But this is being definitely chased this morning. I can promise that. It'll be chased through 30 cents if it gets there. All right? And that will not be me. I will not be one of those people. SPRC pulling a little bit more now. We'll see if six holds. But ultimately, as these stocks pull in the morning, it doesn't matter whether they spike or whether they st straight pull out the gate. I start mapping out levels, all right? So I'm gonna start mapping out levels and these levels are gonna become levels of potential reward. These are gonna be potential take profit levels right now, all right? One, two, high a day, pre-market highs, wherever VWAP's gonna end up being here in the next few minutes will also be a target, all right? also mark a few of these areas that may end up being support kind of areas all right oh it didn't keep them mm. anyways before i get off get off and work with my wolves here in the discord as i watch these fade this is what i'm watching for pre-market high now high a day set at 705 okay so if i'm trading 605 if i get a 610 entry i can get 10 cents risk if i want to use six with 90 cents upside back to high a day and a buck 80 upside back towards pre-market highs. So decent risk reward there, right? Now I still look at this as a lot of downside as well, but this is how I map out trades in my head every single morning when I'm getting pools or if I'm getting, or if I'm getting a uh, push as well. So like LIFW for now, if this is going to be the high a day for now, I'll mark that 28 cent range as a high. And then to, in order to get a good trade off of this, I need it to pull enough to where I get good risk reward if I sell it back at that high. That becomes my single. Okay. On SPRC, I need good risk reward to seven for me to get a good trade here. I hope that makes sense to you guys on very basic, very, very basic. There's a way more to it, but, but that's the idea. I'm not trading anything as of now, as of now, um, Any questions? Any questions before we wrap up and I get to the Discord with my peeps? SDC, I'm specifically watching... It broke yesterday's low at 12 cents, hit 11 cents this morning. And I'm just watching to see if it's going to panic more, if it's going to reclaim this 12, 11 cent range right now and kind of bottom out. So I don't need to be the first in, but I'll be watching this for, for bankruptcy bounce. Absolutely. Now you can see uh, there's a little reversal already this morning on SDC, but the idea is here's high a day. So if I were playing it, I got to take profits in a high a day real quick. All right. Not necessarily the entire position, but this becomes a level I like to size out into. A quarter of my position, a half of my position. All right? That's the game for me.
Any questions? Is trade zero good to trade OTC? Uh, I'm not sure. And OTCs fucking suck now, so there's no point in trading them, really. You know? They've been limited by a lot of brokers. There's rarely OTCs on my fucking scan in the first place ever that have volume. So if you're someone who's still stuck in OTC land, I mean, I don't know how you're doing it. There's nothing left. Does that make sense? Ooh, baby. 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 What? It's my baby. My baby. Okay, here. There's your baby. Love you. Yeah, I'll explain bankruptcy plays real fast. It's, I called it the bankruptcy bounce, all right? All you need to know is that since the beginning of time, since I've been watching them, most of them, most bankruptcies at some point bounce 100%. Now, whether it's 10 cents to 20 cents, you know, whatever it may be, they just do it. I can't explain it. And, before, and, that's, and then some of them will emerge from bankruptcy. Some of them obviously will get delisted. Some of them will dissolve, whatever it, whatever it is. That'll all come down to their bankruptcy proceedings and stuff like that. It's something I noticed in 2016, then 2017, and I started playing them and making a shit ton of money from them. You know, I made like $80,000 when Hertz went bankrupt and they went to HTZGQ on their bounce. All right. Here's Hertz. Ooh, looks like they're struggling right now. Might have to invest in them pretty soon. Look at that. Um, what's up with Hertz? But when they went to HTZGQ, They don't even have this anymore. That sucks. Anyways, that's just something I noticed back in the day, okay? That they do. They do bounce, and they will bounce 100% when they do bounce. Or more. Huge bounces sometimes, okay? So that's the game. I don't, I don't put too much into it. Post-bankruptcy, I like to give it a day or two. Usually two, three days. We look for bottoming, and then that's it. So today, I'll be watching it for sure. For some bottom action, even starting to add, starting to put a position on here, probably at 10 cents, 9 cents, 8 cents. We'll see. We'll see. It will be bought at some point. It's going to bounce hard. I promise. And if it doesn't, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. I'll be more safe than I was on VRAQ. Does the coupon co code apply to the monthly? Yes, it does. It does, it does apply. What was my entry point before a bankruptcy play? That's what I'm talking about. You, you got you to gotta wait. You got to be patient like I'm trying to be here. People were impatient. People were definitely buying it yesterday. All those people are like shit being shaken out today. Okay. Look at SPRC. They just halted down, y'all. Okay. So perfect lesson. Perfect, perfect fucking lesson for you guys who are just joining me. Um, 704, that morning range. That's a high a day. Okay. That's what I was saying. If I want to get good risk reward on a trade like this, I got to be hitting low, low sixes and selling it into the 690s to, to take that reward, okay? To take what's there. And if you're not, you're in trouble. And if you're someone who likes to chase it into highs a day, you're in trouble. And if you're someone who can't cut losses quickly, you're in trouble. And if you're, any, and if you're doing anything other than buying lows off off of this scenario and then selling into high sizing out into highs you're in trouble okay and most people can't help it they they're buying that candle when it starts spiking green on them and they feel like it's starting to reverse to me it's all about that weakness finding the weakness finding the lows where it should hold seeing it hold taking my position getting good risk reward on the single but again this was up a lot this gapped up a lot so i'm not inclined to do it up here if the chart looked like this going into the open, you may have seen me long. It may have changed the game. Okay. I did take just the slightest starter on SDC here. The slightest, slightest starter. 10,000 shares is the beginning. Um, 
that'll probably be my only trade for today is I'll probably work STC possibly. We'll see. It may need to, it may need a day or two to shake some more. Hopefully, I wouldn't mind if it shook some more, but But SPRC a great example of why I like to look at risk the way I do and how it does differ than what other people fucking do. They don't know what they're doing. Everyone's trying to buy this kind of like chase the strength and chase the shit. 650 675 is a terrible fucking entry in my eyes. It's fucking terrible. 680, 670, 650 is one to one in my eyes. 660 is less than one to one. We're starting anything above 650, 640, I'm getting less than one to one on my money. And when I'm trading small cap, I, that cannot fucking happen to me. Maybe when you're trading other shit, but when I am trading my strategies, I'm looking for one to five minimum to the single. So I would need a minimum one to five to seven dollars there. And if I'm being really safe, I'm trying to get one to five to VWAP, y'all. Does that make sense? VWAP's a target too. So I hope that makes sense. SDC is being delisted October 4th. Yeah, I'm looking for a bounce today and that's it. And then I take it off. That's literally it. Anyways, everyone, I do have to get going. Um, you know, thank you so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this, please smash the like. Make sure you're subscribed. Like I said, I've got some interviews with some really great traders coming up got a new podcast coming up where i'll be interviewing all my friends you know millionaire traders and stuff like that um, along with some other people from other industries that i want to interview that i think will have a big impact on some of your trading and some trade ideas too so again if you enjoyed it please smash the like we'll catch you guys soon uh stay safe out there love you all